Welcome to $100 Plus Mileage. This is the podcast about New Hampshire bills that might not make the news, but could still impact you. We've made it to the end of another legislative session. Before we wrap up this season of the podcast, we want to take a look at some of the biggest issues our elected officials have faced this year. As always, we'll be diving into the legislation, unpacking pros and cons, and telling you how to make your voice heard. I'm Mike Dunbar, content editor for Citizens Count. And I'm Anna Brown, Director of Research and Analysis for Citizens Count. So Anna, recently you and I put together a survey asking about what New Hampshire issues Granite Staters care the most about so we can ask political candidates about those issues. Let's tell the folks a little more about how that works. Yes. As you noted in the introduction, the legislative session ended in May, and the legislature always takes a break over the summer. But this year is an election year, so they had even more reason to wrap up voting. The filing period for candidates opened June 1st, which means the election season has officially begun. For those who aren't aware, every election cycle, citizens count surveys and profiles the roughly 900 candidates for state and federal office in New Hampshire, from state representative through U.S. senator. When citizens count staff choose which issues to ask about on our candidate surveys and how to phrase those questions, we know we are sending a message about the most important issues that are facing New Hampshire. Our survey drafting process therefore includes input from various policy advocates, stakeholders, and the general public. So, to honor the end of the legislative session and kick off Citizens Count election work, it seemed fitting to close this season of the podcast with an episode all about the most important issues voters want to see on our candidate survey. Citizens Count created a forum to gather input on these hot issues, and we shared that forum through Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, our newsletter, personal outreach to media and advocates, and so on, and we got 110 responses. That led us to these top five 2022 issues we are going to talk about today. All right, well, let's dive in. First, the number one issue on Grand Stater's minds. What could that be? This is interesting because we started gathering input weeks before the shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas on May 24th. But even so, respondents were still most interested in learning where New Hampshire candidates stand on gun laws. But that's sort of a nebulous topic, right? I mean, there's stricter gun laws, there's laws to make other laws less strict. Yes. And to be clear, when we created this form for input, we were not saying specifically what our questions would be. It was just these general topics. What do we need to cover? And the New Hampshire legislature considers loosening or tightening gun laws almost every year. So talking about this year, in May, the legislature passed a bill to block state or local enforcement of any federal laws or actions aimed at limiting firearms. That's HB 1178. The bill is headed to Governor Sununu for his signature or veto. Next year, we can anticipate Democrats will probably reintroduce a bill to expand background checks to include more private firearm sales. That's a proposal that has come up several years. So watching both of those debates, you know, whether you're enshrining gun rights or you're looking to add more background checks or other limits or controls, Top issue, number one issue for people who were responding to our survey for input. Sure. So both sides of the aisle sort of represented there. Okay. What's the second biggest issue for folks? It is unsurprising that abortion is at the forefront of Granite Sater's minds following the leak of a draft U.S. Supreme Court opinion overturning Roe v. Wade. So once again, we can talk a little bit about the latest legislation here. Last year, Governor Sununu signed a ban on abortion after 24 weeks gestation as part of the state budget. This year, some Democrats sponsored legislation to block any further abortion restrictions, while some Republicans sponsored a bill to ban abortions as early as six weeks. Most of that legislation failed. The legislature did pass a bill adding some exceptions to the ban on abortion after 24 weeks, which Governor Sununu has signed. But once again, you can see from the legislation this year that debate is still very much open and ongoing on both sides of the aisle. Yeah, I think this could definitely have a huge impact both on state and national politics, of course, moving forward. So it makes sense we want to know where candidates stand on that stuff. So, all right, what's next? New Hampshire's Education Freedom Account Program. Passed as part of last year's state budget, the EFA program allows parents to access some state school funding and spend it on private and or homeschooling expenses. Supporters argue the EFA program empowers students to access the best education for their needs, but opponents argue it drains critical funding from public schools. There were several bills this year to audit, restrict, or repeal the EFA program, and the vast majority of those bills failed, but once again, debate is ongoing. 
So the financial impact of the EFA program will probably be of particular concern during the budget process next year. Yeah, people are so fired up on both sides of this issue. And in fact, that's probably the theme of all these bills so far is there's just, you know, both sides are so fired up, which is probably why these are the ones that are ranking so high. All right, that was number three. So what was number four? Mail-in voting. So in 2020, New Hampshire allowed no excuse absentee ballots for all voters due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But that was a one-time policy change. New Hampshire does not allow mail-in voting. Some legislators want to change that. They argue that no excuse absentee voting increases voter participation. Opponents argue that New Hampshire already has high voter turnout compared to other states, and mail-in voting would decrease public trust in election security. Both the current and former New Hampshire secretaries of state avow that New Hampshire elections are secure. Also, Governor Sununu, and there have been audits and so on, but former President Donald Trump continues to tell his followers that election fraud is a problem in New Hampshire. It's interesting because I feel like New Hampshire is very different from other states when it comes to our voting than people may realize. Our ballot counting machines are not connected to the internet. We use all paper ballots. That's different from other states, but it's still very much at the forefront of a lot of people's mind, I think, because of national news. Right. So working from home has outlived the pandemic for a lot of people, but so far voting from home has not. But maybe that could change. Who knows? All right. Last but not least, what's number five, Anna? Yes. Last but certainly not least, there have been many school-related debates over the past two years, which we did include on this little input form. So mask policies, remote learning, critical race theory, teacher retention, school board processes, the list goes on and on. And many of the 110 people who responded to Citizens Count brought up those issues, but they ranked the level of per-pupil public school funding from the state as one of the most important school-related concerns. And in fact, over half of those who responded to us identified the issue as, quote-unquote, extremely important to ask. So there's an ongoing lawsuit over how the state funds public schools. The school funding formula may also come up in next year's state budget debate. I mean, this is a debate that's been going on for three decades in New Hampshire, so I'm not sure it's going to be resolved next year, but it is definitely a big issue which was reflected in our responses. Yeah, this is a really cool list. I think it shows where so many Granite Staters are focused right now, and it doesn't necessarily adhere to one strict political doctrine or another. And I think that's New Hampshire for you. Now it's time for a little fine print about this survey, though, Anna, don't you think? Yes, it's really important to note here, the responses we're talking about are not the result of a scientific poll. We did not seek a randomized sample of Granite Staters, nor did we collect demographic information to determine if the people who responded are representative of the state overall, whether that's age, race, region, party affiliation, you name it. So Think of these results kind of like man-on-the-street interviews, a snapshot of how some locals are thinking about the election, and probably those locals who are already a little tuned in and a little passionate because they had some reason to find our survey on their social media, or we reached out to them, or they subscribed to our newsletter or something like that. So once again, not scientific, kind of a, a qualitative research process. And if you want more detail on how we did it and who we talked to, please contact us at info at citizenscount.org. And if you want to know where your candidates stand on these issues, or you are yourself a candidate looking to fill out the Citizens Count survey, stay tuned. Citizens Count will send a survey to every candidate and launch their profiles on our website this July. And with that, Let's dive into our final Only in New Hampshire trivia segment of the season. What have we got, Anna? Well, these issues we discussed today are contentious, and there will surely be some fiery debate about them in the years to come. But hopefully things won't get as uh, passionate as they did on February 18th, 1842 in Concord. It was on that date that the radical and conservative factions of the Democratic Party had a full-on brawl in Concord's town hall over control of a party caucus. An observer, Henry McFarland, writes that, quote unquote, seats and desks were smashed, wigs flew in the dusty air, and bloody noses were seen on most respectable faces. There was a great uproar and clatter of flying feet, combatants chasing their foes as far down as Center Street. Well, I'm, I'm glad that things were always contentious in New Hampshire politics. This, it, this, we it didn't invent that. Definitely adds a little bit of context to the current political climate because we have seen some incredibly, incredibly contentious 
floor fights. We saw an executive council meeting shut down by protesters last fall. I'm not even going to get to the national level, but I do think back sometimes when I get a little scared about how there were events like this. And I know that there were canings on the floor of the U.S. Congress <laughs> during the Civil War, which I guess was because all, all dudes just carried around canes back then, I guess. Maybe if that starts coming back, we should start being concerned about that. And I will throw out there one other funny story that's kind of related to this, which I have yet to get to the bottom of. A former legislator once told me that he had a colleague who would wear different color wigs on voting days, depending on whether he was for or against the bills that were being voted on. And it was one of those things that he just told me in passing. And I was like, wait, what? What? And now (laughs) to this day, I still don't know who that person is or if it really happened. But I would also like to imagine them maybe finding occasion sometimes to throw their wig up in the air and put on a different one. So, you know, there are some good things in history that we should bring back. Yeah, that's true. I, I hope that they carried another one, you know, in maybe a fanny pack or something, just just in case they had a last minute change of heart. <laughs> that's right, because we always in- encourage legislators to be able to hear public input and maybe change their mind based on new facts that they're learning. So if if you if you express your opinion through wigs, please consider that other option. That's right. In fanny pack or or man bag of your choice or lady bag, since obviously female legislators could also choose to don wigs. Amen, amen. All right, folks, sad to say it, but that wraps up this episode and this season of the $100 Plus Mileage podcast. But you can find more information and episodes at citizenscount.org. We'd like to thank Franklin Pierce University for producing and the Granite State News Collaborative for hosting. Our theme music is composed by me, Mike Dunbar. And lastly, we thank you for giving us a listen and thinking about how you can be part of what makes New Hampshire by the people, for the people.